Are the airstrikes against Islamist militants in Syria and Iraq working? Kind of, but they highlight the difficulty of defeating the group, calling itself Islamic State. WSJ's Noor Malice has the story, and she joins us now live from Beirut, Lebanon. And Noor, thanks for being there. Thanks for having me. So d tell us more about this. Um, airstrikes with, you know, laser-guided missiles and smart bombs would seem on the face of it to be, to be the, the, the way to go, but it's actually a lot harder than that. Tell us what's been happening. Sure. Two weeks into the air campaign in Syria, which has followed more than a month, six or seven weeks of strikes in Iraq, there are some signs that the Islamic State is being disrupted in its operations. We've been seeing them fleeing their bases. They're trying to hide their armored vehicles and weaponry. In general, they're taking a much lower profile in the areas they control, you know, simply by doing things like removing their black flags from their armored vehicles and trying to blend into the civilian population. As my colleagues in Washington have reported, <laughs> um, we're also seeing them change their communication strategy. So they're trying to rely less on radio and things that um, can be intercepted. But beyond that, there is little sign that they have been actually been pushed back at all. In Iraq, for example, they're still holding much of the territory that they, they've taken. Um, they're advancing on the Kurdish um, city of Kobani in Syria. Um, it's very difficult and, you know, it, it, it really cuts to the heart of the problem with dealing with this threat. And as some U.S. officials have said, Publicly and pretty bluntly, there's no purely military solution to the Islamic State problem. Mm. And, and they're actually making some great, uh, some great big gains. Um, uh, not great for the people who uh, are living under those gains. The yellow area is the area that ISIS has taken control of. One of, one of the things you mentioned in, in the story um, that, that you wrote was the fact that they're deciding to sm travel in small groups and at night, uh, much harder to, to hit them. And also that when some of the strikes made on training camps have been, you know, the training camps have actually been empty. Uh, this, this, is, this is a problem. It's going to, I mean, it looks to me like it's going to take ground troops, right? It is rather alarming. I mean, military analysts and defense officials in the U.S. and here in the region say that airstrikes at best can uh, cripple their movements and thwart their mobility, which it's beginning to do. Um, strikes in Syria so far have also focused on hitting their financing infrastructure, so things like oil refineries, because oil revenue is a major revenue source for them. And that's also happening, but in a very slow way. Um, so what we see is that this campaign is now moving into its next stage, which is a ground war by proxy, of course, because the U.S. is not going to commit boots on the ground. And that's the very challenging and pretty complex part of this fight, because um, the U.S. and its Arab allies are going to be arming and working with a bunch of forces who are different in capability. They're not always very friendly with each other. So in Iraq, for example, you have the Iraqi army, which the U.S. The army, which is the, the U.S. is trying to build up, and Kurdish Peshmerga forces in the north, which have not been on uh, great terms over the past few years. In Syria, you have moderate rebels, but you also have Islamist fighters um, who are very powerful on the battlefield and now sort of trying to uh, starting to turn to Islamic State, even if they've never supported them, just because these uh, uh, Western airstrikes yeah. of began to garner more support for the Islamic State. Wow, it is a complex situation and a tough fight. We're going to leave it there. Much more in, the, in that story by Norm Malice on WSJ.com.